Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. How are you all? Uh, First of all, super, super exciting and you may have seen on social media, but we just hit over 30,000 downloads of the Mediumship Matters podcast. Woohoo! I'm I can't bloody believe it, if I'm honest. (laughs) I'd like to say something a bit more like an Oscar acceptance speech at this stage, but let's just say, oh my freaking G, I can't believe it. Um, Amazing. Thank you all so much, uh, especially for the reviews, because they really help the podcast algorithm to see that I'm actually quite nice and uh, all of the comments, all of the shares, all of the listens, 30,000, goodness gracious me. So of course, in the way that uh, it always is, we hit one target, we keep going for another. So let's see what we can achieve together in May. Now I've got some listener questions, I've got a little pile of paper here ready to uh, read with you all, but I just wanted to talk to you about where I'm at and what's been going on with me in the hope that it's interesting. (laughs) It might not be. Uh, So I've been super busy, super, super busy, always, 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 but that is just how I run. I, I don't like to rest particularly and even in my spare time I've started playing a stupid computer game where I'm running a hospital so I'm always hustling even when I'm on the down low so uh, I've been doing lots of demonstrations and loving it and the weirdest thing happened so uh, I did my big event in Faversham which I think I've mentioned Uh, and uh, I got a microphone for the first time and I was really nervous about using it and then as soon as I did I realized that I loved it I preferred it everybody was laughing at my jokes because they could hear my jokes and this always makes you feel better and uh, it just felt more interactive I thought a microphone was going to be a barrier and it turned out that the microphone made me feel like it was more of an energy exchange So I've been really, really enjoying that and I've got loads of things planned. Next year I'm hoping to go on a little bit of a prolonged tour of the UK. I mean, when I say a tour of the UK, it sounds like I'm going to be off every night for a non-stop thing. But actually, I really honestly believe with mediumship, you can't work every night. It, It won't work the way it's supposed to if you try to. You have to have downtime. So my version of a tour is a bit more go off somewhere, come home, have two weeks to recover, go off somewhere else, come home, that kind of thing. But uh, I'm excited. It's just the weird balance of trying to find venues uh, that can accommodate. I'm aiming for about 150 people per demonstration. Um, And that's a hard number because you can go from sort of 50 60 easily in most venues and then you go any higher all of a sudden they can seat 300 and it's the theater and you've got to fill it and I don't I'm not ready for that yet so just trying to find places if you know anywhere do drop me an email it's very helpful so that's what's been going on with me lots of planning for stuff for next year devising a new course on spirit guides for the end of the year online if anyone's interested and uh yeah, trying to work out where I want to be and where spirit want me to be. So still carrying on, still carrying on with the last six months worth of work. So there we go. Now, one of the things that's been coming up recently is uh, disagreeing with things that I'm saying and uh, people in the world disagree I mean it's a tale as old of time isn't it this I don't like what you're saying and I just wanted to talk to you all today to start off with by saying that's absolutely fine you shouldn't be putting me or anyone else on a pedestal where you expect me to only say things that resonate with you 
And some of that is really, really important for your own spiritual development. So if somebody, whether it's someone like me that you listen to on a podcast, or whether it's somebody you meet in the street or somebody you see online, if somebody says something that you don't agree with and it triggers you, you need to be looking at what it's triggering within you. That is massively important for everybody's spiritual development. So you have to look at why you're offended. Now, the other day there was somebody on Instagram who was sharing um, their thoughts on abortion and things like that. And I didn't agree with them. I knew I didn't agree with them, so I just unfollowed them. I didn't engage in it. It's fine, they're where they're at, I'm where I'm at. I don't think that there's any point wasting energy trying to get a dialogue going because we're coming at it from two different, very different points of view. And that's absolutely fine. And my point of view on that has changed from what it used to be. So there you go. Um, But you can understand when it's a waste of energy and that's different to when you get annoyed with people. And what I've been seeing is a real rise in people getting really, really annoyed and angry about things that they don't agree with. And this is just such a waste of your energy and such a waste of your focus a dialogue is good a conversation is good like I always say on this podcast please do drop me your questions I want to know where you want clarity I want to know if you want to disagree with me the whole reason I created a panel uh, concept for mediumship natters is that I wanted to hear other people's opinions. We need other people's opinions to grow. If you are in a space where only around you are people who agree with you, with everything you say, it's not actually good for you. But you have to find that balance in. And if you're getting angry with somebody, you need to look at what it is that's making you angry. Because if it's somebody you don't even know, and it's something that doesn't have an impact on your life, why are you even worried about what that person thinks? What does that tell you? And if it is somebody you know, how are you letting that impact your life? How are you letting that change your energy? And this just keeps coming up again and again and again. Um, There is something to learn from everybody that you come across, even if you think they're a dickhead. There you go. That's a spiritual quote for you. (laughs) But you know what I mean? Even if you think they're a complete knobber, um, you can disagree with them and hold your power, hold your space, or look at what it's bringing up for you and what you need to learn from their behaviours, from their actions. So I implore you, please, sit with people that challenge your beliefs spiritually. Sit with people that want to try and do things differently. I I was talking to my husband the other day because it's kind of hard for me in the sense that I do things that nobody has done before and I do them in a way that nobody has done them before. And sometimes that's really brilliant and it works swimmingly and we all go, woohoo, why haven't we done it like this forever? And sometimes it's a shit show and we go, oh, that's why nobody does it like that. Oh, (laughs) that makes sense. And that's okay. It's all about learning and growing and trying and experiencing. And that's the key to life, isn't it? It doesn't come with a manual. We have to learn. We have to learn things. So that's that and then here I go with my questions and I may have to run these across two podcasts because I don't want to go too long and you all fall asleep so first of all um I've got Kim Oak's message on the 30th of March and I apologies guys if I have replied to this I'm so busy I don't know what I've done and what I've said and who I've said it to and all that kind of thing but I'm trying So um, here's Kim's message. My mum died recently in her 60s of an aggressive cancer. She was really hopeful and motivated person and I don't think any of us, including her, believed she would die from this. My auntie, 
my mum's sister, and I have been discussing the dreams we've had about mum since she died, and we both get this sense of her being really pissed off. Pissed off that she died, and pissed off with how we're handling things without her. My mum was a beautiful, warm, loving and supportive person, and I had a lovely close relationship with her. So why am I getting this impression from her? There's two things that make me feel sad about this. Firstly, that either on a subconscious or spiritual level that my auntie and I are not able to feel her love coming through and I can only feel this irritation and unease. Secondly, it's really heartbreaking to feel like my mum's not happy or at peace. Can our loved ones in spirit be pissed off? If they are, how can we put this right? Thank you in advance if you get the chance to answer this. I absolutely love your podcast. You are my new hero. Aww. And you've shone so much light on spiritual matters for me at a time when I really needed your sensible, encouraging and comforting guidance. Thank you. Oh, well, that was lovely. Thanks, Kim. Um, right, I've got to get out, the, out of my embarrassment about reading that aloud and go back to your actual question. So... I don't believe that loved ones in spirit can be pissed off like a human gets pissed off. I think what you're feeling from your mum is her sorrow that she couldn't stay for longer. <clears throat> and so it, I'm sure you've listened to my episode on valves. So this is a combination of your mum's sorrow. She wants you to know that she misses you. She wants you to know that she wants to be with you. She wants you to know that she didn't leave because she wanted to she left because she had to so she's sending you that and then your valves are only open in a certain way to be able to receive certain things from her because of your own sadness and your own heartache and so that's become a bit of a restrictive energy now the first thing I'll say Kim is your mum being a hopeful and motivated person, she's still a hopeful and motivated person. She is absolutely fine. But you have to think of it from the intelligence of the spirit world's point of view. If your mum popped in to you and went, word up Kim, it's absolutely amazing. Hooray for me, I'm in heaven, it's marvelous. How would that make you feel? And so I think the spirit world are treading a fine line here between the fact that your mum is okay because everybody who is in spirit is okay and wanting you to know that she wants to be with you and that she is with you and she would have liked to have stayed longer. So I think as your healing progresses and grows and you start to come to terms with your grief and your loss. I will never say it will be gone, but you know, you learn to heal over that scar and the scar remains and you carry on with your life at some point. And you'll find that as you follow that path, your relationship with your mum and the way that you're able to receive her will be different but you've got to get into a space where more of your valves are open to be able to receive her in a happy place and your mum needs to get the message across to you that she didn't want to leave you and then I think things will level out for you. Um, I don't think she's pissed off with how you're handling things without her, just to be clear. I think she is incredibly proud of you and how you're handling things without her. So she's not coming uh, from judgment. No one in the spirit world comes from judgment. She is happy. She is at peace. But she hasn't really gone anywhere. She's right there with you. And she's out of pain. And she can be shocked and she can be upset that she had to leave and frustrated that she had to leave but also be spirit and be understanding of the journey and the way that it is it's kind of funny in the spirit world I can't I'm trying to find the words for it but it's like there's two it's the yin and the yang of the spirit if this makes sense your mum's spirit of course understands 
why she had to die when she did, understands the journey that that will set you upon, that has uh, set her soul upon, the learning that happened of that, the etc, etc, etc. And still can feel like she wants to be with you and loves you. And I always think that's a hard balance to try and get across truthfully in mediumship. That's why you get a lot of mediums say things like, I can't get somebody through who's just passed, when we all know there's no time in the spirit world. And what they're really saying is, you might not be ready to hear from them in the way that they want to present themselves. So it's always a hard balance to to get to that place, but I hope that helps. I don't feel that she is pissed off um, in a real pissed off kind of sense, but of course I do feel that she would have wanted to stay with you longer. Okie dokes. So my next question is from Cece. Hi Cece, how you doing love? Right, so Cece says, I heard on a podcast I think it was yours, but I can't find it, so I'm not 100% sure, that spirit don't come with us when we're in a low vibrational state. If it was you who said it, could you expand on it some more? If it wasn't, I would love to know your thoughts on it. My belief is that the love of spirit is unconditional and they are always with us no matter what. I've tried to find it so I could quote directly, but I haven't found it yet, so I can only remember how I felt about what was being said and my interpretation of it. And then I replied and said um, my thoughts and then Cece replied again and said um, if you could clarify what a low vibrational state would be because I feel spirit most when I'm clear and connected but this doesn't mean I'm excited or happy. Some of the deepest connections have come at the saddest, saddest times because I'm most open. Now I'm like I said I do try and listen to these back, but I also try and keep them raw. And if I listen to them before I upload them, then I don't put them on. (laughs) I try and do these in one take, uh, warts and all, they're not edited. That's why sometimes I cough, sometimes you hear the dog bark, sometimes you hear a car drive down the road. And um, I don't really wanna change that because I want it to be real. it would be easier to have a script, but then I don't think it would be real and it wouldn't give spirit as many opportunities to drop some of the stuff in that they want to. So if I did say that or imply that, I am so sorry, that is not what I meant. Um, What I remember saying, and memory is a funny thing, isn't it, is that it's harder to feel spirit when you're in a low vibrational state. So if that's what you heard on my podcast, or you might have heard it on someone else's, but of course the spirit world are always there. They are always with us. They take the highs and the lows, or the lies and the (laughs) hoes. Lies and hoes. They take both. So um, yeah, of course they are with us, but I do think that they come at things from a higher vibrational perspective. So like I was just saying to the lovely Kim, her mum can be pissed off that she's not with her, but not pissed off like a human does where it's a damaging pissed off, just I wish I I was with you in the physical still. I see you struggling without me and I want to be there to wipe away your tears, that kind. And so when you're in that space where there is no negativity, because I don't believe there is any negativity in the spirit world, then you're trying to work with a human being who's in a really negative space, sometimes through their own choices, sometimes um, by by other people's, by things that have happened to them and by the bloody journey that we all have to go on. It's harder to feel the spirit well with you because it's so far out of the energy in which you find yourself. It's just a pole apart. Um, One of the nicest things for me recently is the realisation that Spirit gave me that the lady that inspired me to first start working with Spirit and gave me my first message, the reason I liked being around her was because she always felt like sunshine. Because even when we were stressed or having a tough time, she was positive and funny and uplifting. And the other day, um, Spirit showed me that I do that now and it was such a lovely moment for me because 
you always look at the bits you got wrong, the times when you got road rage, the times you were an asshole to your husband just because you're in a bad mood and he wasn't. Just, you know, you always look at those things and you forget uh, in the complexities of being a human that sometimes you are doing better than you think you are. So when I was in my really dark and difficult space where every day felt really, really hard, um, I found it much harder to feel spirit. But on the flip side, on the times when I powered up and I really put my focused intention on my work into feeling the spirit world, I felt them more than I do now because it was such a different energy state. It felt so alien. (laughs) So now because I work with spirit all the time and I feel spirit all the time and I'm constantly connecting to them and the door's always open, it's harder because when I go to work, I'm like, is anyone there? I hope someone's there because I can't feel it. Whereas before I used to, I trained myself to be able to feel them stepping in. So as I've got more compatible with spirit, the irony being, I mean, I'm nowhere near where they are, just to be clear. <laughs> no, n- nowhere near. But as I've got nearer to it, it doesn't have such a large impact. So it makes it harder to, to feel, if that makes sense. So... It's not about being happy or excited. Well, happy, yeah, I do actually think it is about happiness. It's not about being excited. It's about being content. It's about being grateful. It's about feeling in a state of happiness with yourself, of comfort with yourself, of self-acceptance, of honouring yourself, of sitting in a place of love. And if you do that then it's easier to feel spirit around you but of course they are with you when you are being a bitch they were right there with me when I was a complete asshole at secondary school because I was so unhappy um it doesn't mean that they were there clapping me on going yeah be really mean to that person because you're feeling unhappy with yourself that's the way to do that brilliant bravo of course they weren't they were wishing I would make better choices but they also understood the value of the journey on which I was on so they are always there they are always there but I think personally in my own journey when I've had shitty things happen and I've been feeling really unhappy or depressed or when I had surgery and I was really tired and dealing with being all foggy headed from the anaesthetic and stuff like that I didn't feel spirit in the same way that I do when I come at it open and I think that's also partly to do with valves if you're coming at it with a real need and a real fixation on what you want the answer on you're giving spirit a very small space to work when you try and work with spirit when you're happy and you'll just show me that you're there or give me a message or talk to me and you're keeping it open you're not saying tell me what I need to do about my husband should I stay or should I go or tell me what I should do about this person that's being horrible to me or anything like that if you're just like word up show me you're around what can we talk about today of course that makes it easier for spirit to connect with you because you're not just keeping certain valves open you've got more open and that's the funny thing I mean spirit are bloody hilarious they are absolutely hilarious and that's one of the things I'll never forget being in a circle this is one of the examples that's popping into my head with a lady uh, Linda and she was getting really frustrated because she wanted to know the name of her angel and it was after circle had finished and there was just a couple of us here and she was so fed up that she tried and she'd asked and she'd asked and she asked and she couldn't get the name of her angel and I have the dictionary of angels and it was on the shelf and it sort of winked at me so I said I know what we'll do this has got thousands of angels in it you asked to be guided to it flip through the pages put your finger on a page and whatever name is on there is the name for your angel and we were like ho 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 we're so clever beating the system and then she shut her eyes flipped through the book slammed her finger down on the book and guess what it was on a blank page oh my god We laughed. I mean, I think I ruptured something that day. But you could just feel the spirit world's absolute joy at dropping such a ridiculous joke into the mix and how funny it was and how you can't bypass anything because that's not how it works. 
and the joy of it all. So I do think it's about joy and happiness and celebrating but equally you know if I'm on a roller coaster at Thorpe Park with my sister I don't feel the spirit world with me I might call on them as I go down a dip but um it's it's not about being an extreme of anything it's about being in a place of comfort so I hope that helps and the reason that I talked about that if I didn't make that clear is because I get so many messages so many messages from people who think that spirit aren't with them because they are a bad person or think that they can't feel spirit because of trauma that they've got or upset that they've got. And it might be affecting how you open up to the spirit world, but I assure you, they are always there. Always there. I hope... Oh, I don't know if I can't, honestly can't remember, but I will just tell you one more story about this. Um, And it's not one of my finest moments, I have to be absolutely honest. So um, before I got to where I am now, one of the things that I used to do all the time was want people to say thank you. And us Brits particularly, we are very rule bound with courtesy and manners and cues and stuff like that. It's a problem, it's a curse. And one of the things that I used to always do was look, if I was driving, I would look to check that people had said thank you to me uh, when I was waiting. I don't even bother now, I try. I mean, sometimes I catch myself doing it because habits are hard to break and I'd love to tell you I've broken this one. But I try to look away so I have no idea whether they've said thank you or not because I'm focusing on something positive. So I try and look for something positive that I can see while I wait for that person. And um, I was stressed and peed off. I can't even remember where I was going now. But I was driving down the road and it was my right of way and somebody was coming past somewhere and I decided in this weird way that you do when you first start working with spirit, or I did anyway, not everybody, but where you think you're being so spiritual, but you're actually totally in your ego. So I was like, oh, I'm spiritual. I'll reverse back for you because I'm so spiritual, you know. So I reversed back for them. And then I looked at them expectantly. And they didn't say thank you. Horror. Horror. And do you know what I did? I wound down my window and called them the worst swear word. I mean, honestly. And what I realised was that I had been driving my car, talking to my spirit guides, having a lovely conversation with them. And then I'd completely stepped out of that power and completely into my ego And then even worse, made it even worse by dropping the C-bomb. But when I turned back to my guides, expecting them to be horrified, disgusted, not there anymore, um, they were just laughing at me, with me, but laughing and just saying, do you not think that was a little extreme? Really? Does it really, really matter? So, of course, they are still with us, even when we are completely, ridiculously, stupidly, crazily human, they are still there. Um, Always. Because they love us. And that's the dealio. And they never get fed up, and they never get pissed off, and they never get frustrated. And to my knowledge, they never go into a staff room in heaven and ask if they could have a different project. Because honestly, I think if they would, mine would have changed teams many, many times. So I hope that gives more clarity on that. Um, And now I've shared with you all my shameful story. (laughs) But it's important to understand we are humans. And it's so interesting how it can flick just like a switch. You know, I was completely talking to my guides, having a nice time and then boff, straight into anger and human and flares up and negativity. So 
the more that you sit with spirit and the more that you work with spirit and the more that you change by spirit, the less reactive you become. Which wasn't your question, but we went there anyway. So I'm going to stop the podcast here because I don't like to make them too long because it's a bit of a commitment then isn't it and I will continue with more listener questions on the next one thank you all very much